taken from notorious Nazi women by Stuart Andel. Available on Amazon. Hertha Oberhuser. Hertha Oberhuser was born in Cologne, Germany, on the 15th of May, 1911. Her early life was relatively uneventful, with young Hertha focusing on a medical career from an early age. Before she became one of the most feared Nazi physicians of the Third Reich, Oberhuser studied medicine in Bonn from 1931, then went on to speciality training with the skin clinic at the Dusseldorf Medical Academy. During this period of education, she had also joined the League of German Girls in 1935, before going on to join the full Nazi party, Nstap, National Socialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, in May of 1937. By 1940, Hertha Oberhuser had proven herself proficient in taking care of the public, and was granted her license to practice in the areas of specialist skin care and the treatment of sexually transmitted diseases. It was also in 1940, that Frau Oberhuser began working as a camp physician and specialist at the dreaded Ravensbrück concentration camp. Oberhuser joined the camp as an assistant physician to notorious Nazi doctor Karl Gebhardt, whom she worked under and also participated fault with, in his surgical experiments on the unfortunate victims interred at Ravensbrück. The experiments Oberhuser carried out under Gebhardt's supervision, were cruel, gruesome, torturous, and consistently fatal. A deputy judge would later say at Oberhuser's trial, that the experiments carried out at the camp were in the most brutal manner by doctors who were apparently stationed there for the purpose of experimenting on human guinea pigs. In total, 74 female Polish political prisoners were subjected to the experiments without their consent. The women were subjected to horrific recreations of battlefield injuries that were dutifully conducted by the doctors. Foreign materials would then be introduced to the wounds to cause infection, materials such as wood or glass were rubbed into an already painful open wound. Once the experimenter, such as Oberhuser, was happy that infection was present, they would give their victims sulfonamide to see if it was an effective treatment. If the prisoners refused to be experimented on, a witness from the camp stated that they were, shut into bunkers and later the operations were performed by force. It has been said that the experiments were initially ordered by Heinrich Himmler himself, the leader of the SS, though no corroborative evidence has so far confirmed this. During this time, Hertha Oberhuser was also carrying out other despicable acts, amongst these, she killed otherwise healthy children with oil and evipen injections, before dissecting their limbs and removing their vital organs. The most unsavory part is the fact that it would take between three and five minutes for the children to die, the intensity of their fear in those moments cannot be captured by mere words. In 1943, Oberhuser was transferred to the SS sanatorium at Hohenlichen, to work as a surgical assistant. The hospital at Hohenlichen was in close proximity to the Ravensbrück concentration camp, and Oberhuser's position there was to attend to the post-operative care of the experimentees. Though the callous disregard with which she went about her position, dictates that care was a very loose valuing of the word. Witnesses from the Ravensbrück trials and the Nuremberg doctors' trial, state this disregard in their testimony. Keith Mant from the Royal Medical Army Corps stated that her care was, little more than sadistic. Other witness testimonies gave further evidence to the cruelty, with one individual who was experimented on, stating that they were refused water. Another witness said that when she was given water, Oberhuser mixed it with vinegar, a specifically cruel and petty action that could hardly be called, following orders. Other witnesses would say that the wounds that they had been afflicted fault with, in so-called experiments, were not even validly attended to. One statement stipulated, Oberhuser at first promised to dress my wounds, and, smiling, went out of the ward and we saw no more of her that day.
Another victim stated that they were also refused pain relief for any of the myriad of injuries they had been forced to sustain. In total, five of the women died as a result of the sulfonamide experiments, and a further six were later executed. When the Nuremberg medical trial came to the fore on 9 December, 1946, Herta Oberhuser was the only woman to stand. When asked about her service to the Nazi party she stated, Being a woman didn't stop me being a good National Socialist. I think female National Socialists were every bit as valuable as men in keeping what we believed in alive. When the trial ended on 20 August, 1947, Oberhuser was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. This would later be reduced significantly to five years. By the April of 1952, Herta Oberhuser had been released from prison for good behavior and decided to take up a position in the medical field again. Rather distastefully, she became a family doctor in Staxi, Germany. In 1956, she lost her position due to being recognized by a former prisoner from Ravensbrück. The Association of Former Ravensbrück Concentration Camp Prisoners held a protest, and it was enough to force her practice to close. In 1958, her license to practice medicine was revoked. Herta Oberhuser died in January of 1978, at the age of 66 years.